Hello, this is Demetria Rujo Shabazz, and um, you are here with the Media Justice Network series. And I'm very pleased to bring to you today filmmaker uh, Gloria Rolando. She's a Cuban filmmaker. She's been um, in the film business for 35 years. And we're going to talk with her today um, about not only how she got into filmmaking, but some of those challenges uh, in filmmaking in Cuba, but also about her most recent film, Dialogue uh, with My Grandmother. Gloria, welcome to the Media Justice Network series. Thank you for this invitation. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Yeah. I'm just going to introduce a little bit about your background for folks who have, may not know your work. Um, and then if you could just talk to us about how you got into filmmaking. So first off, um, Gloria... Rolando um, has extensive film work on African and Caribbean uh, culture and Cuban culture, and um, it addresses some of the underrepresented history and, and uh, events within uh, Cuba. Um, some would say Afro-Cuban culture, but it's all uh, Cuban culture. Um, and she's been making films, as I said, for uh, 35 years. And... Um, you know, if you could just talk to us about how did you get into filmmaking and then what are some of those specific challenges for being a Cuban filmmaker? Bueno, you know, I never went to a film school. Uh, we didn't have film school in Havana, Cuba, uh, in, the eight, in the 70s, in the 60s. So um, I followed the tradition that I found in the Institute of Cuban Film. I first started music, the music school between 11 and 18 years old. You were a musician? Yes. Yeah. So after, uh, when I finished at the, the middle level of music, I went at the University of Havana and I studied art history. And I finished when 23 years old in 1976. And the Institute of Cuban Film, they need graduate students. They need, uh, as an assistant of director, to do research for the documentaries, uh, to help in the production. So that's how I was involved in the film industry, because they select uh, the people, the students, according to their curriculum. I see. So, th and, and it was a, an, an excellent place to start working for, because of the prestigious that had at the Institute of Cuban Film, ICAIC. That's how I was involved in the world of the cinema, but I need to say that I never had this kind of dream, you know, to be a, di a film director or have projects. Uh, so it was a process that uh, I started since I arrived there, and little by little working with different film directors that I was involved in the world of the cinema. So did you begin doing kind of the, the archival research work? Because your films, and there's since 1991, it's over, what, 15, 16 films. It's just 13. amazing. 13. 13. Yes. Uh, amazing how many films that you've done since 1991 when you began. Mm -hmm. um, did you first start doing kind of this research archival type of projects? With See, I, I have been doing all kind of research because e even in those documentaries like Ogun that I didn't went to the archive, I need to sit down and explore with the guy that I interview. And this is something that is, is very important, how to make an interview for the people that you are shooting right. and the main idea according to the language of the film that, that you want to, to present. So it was a wonderful uh, experience. It's amazing because also within your, your film style, you include music, yes. which is some wonderful music. I, sí. I think of um, the film in 2001, I believe, is um, about the history of, you know, the, the Haitian genocide mm -hmm. um, there in Cuba and this beautiful song that begins the film, this very lyrical sí. song. I did share it. I did See, all the music is not for me, for my conception in my films is not only to have a, a company of the images 
or support the images. It's part of the narration. Uh, and, and sometimes it's music and dance, both things. Right. That are part of the narration. I, I could see that. Especially in the documentaries related with the immigrants. Right. People from the different Caribbean countries, from Jamaica, Barbados. They brought their hopes to develop a new life in Cuba, but also they brought their culture. It's amazing. And, you know, I just think of the many themes that you've tackled within your documentaries, and you've mainly made documentaries. You have one yes. narrative film. Um, Asada Shakur um, was one of your topics uh, yes. in filmmaking. Um, but then you also look at um, the black experiences mm -hmm. uh, within the Caribbean. Sí. Can you tell me why these are areas in which you mainly explore within your, your films? See, sí, because Cuba is a Caribbean island, it's a Caribbean country, and uh, we share the destiny of the many other Caribbean islands, for example, migration. After the Panama Canal was finished, Cuba was one of the destiny to migrate, to make money, to take care of the families that remain in the rest of the island. So uh, I always was fascinated by the process of immigration. And why in Cuba we have many black people with English names? Because oh, they right. came from Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad, St. Kitts, Montserrat, different uh, Caribbean countries. And they arrived to Cuba at the beginning of the 20th century. But also arrived people from Haiti, the Haitians, uh, at the same period of time. And all of them, they suffered discrimination for being black, for being poor people. Uh, but, um, and uh, they don't have too much voice in the official history. So what I, uh, I was trying to do is to present, you know, the voices of those who doesn't have the history, that made the history, but didn't have the voices in the official history. So when you say that they didn't have the voices in the official history, is that not a history within, you know, I think of the, the education system in Cuba, which yes. is something to, to be admired. Is because, that something that's discussed mm -hmm. or? No, no, because this is a history of mi migration. It's related with the world of the sugar industry. The sugar industry, in, yeah. And it's basically around the provinces of the east of the, of the island. I live in Havana, right. and not many people know about this history or, and the presence of the ha people from Haiti or Jamaica or Barbados in Cuba. This is a history that you need to, to go to in the center of the island and in the eastern part of the island, Camagüey, Santiago, all the uh, eastern part of the island, that you could find a lot of sugar mills. Right. It's the sugar industry that brought all these people to Cuba. And of course, they, they, they were manipulated or, uh, by the American companies, by the owners of the sugar mill. So it's a history that is amazing because many of these people die, but the family remain and they have the same rights. They are Cubans. No Haitian, Afro-Haitian, population, no, all of them, they are Cubans. They're all considered Cubans. Yes, uh, with the same rights. So that was the, the narrative film in 2001. Then you revisited that topic in 2014 with mm -hmm. reshipment. Mm -hmm. um, why uh, have, was it three films? See, uh, because, one, on the... because one is related with the people from the West Indian Caribbean, right. Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad, Panama, the other one is related with the people from Cayman Island. Right. That arrived to Cuba, to the small island that belonged to Cuba, that, uh, the Isle of Pine. Now it's called the Isle of Jews. And another one that is related with the ha people from Haiti. So it's three different documentaries. So three different documentaries, but all dealing with kind with of... The mi that, with migration. With migration. And, and the interconnection between our countries. Right. You know, the other thing about the, that film, the, particularly the 2001 uh, film, you dedicate it to Sarah Gomez. 
Can you uh, share why you dedicated that film uh, to Sarah see. Gomez and who she is? First, I, I was trying to make a documentary of Sarah Gomez, and I, I didn't have any support. But uh, I discovered her films because I had to study the, her films. And, and one of them, Chronicles of My Family, Cronica de Mi Familia, uh, that she dedicated to her family and discovered the secret, the history of her family. Um, uh, get, uh, I, I get a, a bit of impression on me. And uh, when I uh, made my uh, narrative, The Roots of My Heart, that is a fictional history of 57 minutes related with a black woman right. in the present. The 2001 yes, film, Roots of My yes, Heart. Right. That she wants to discover the mystery around one photo, the photo of the grand-grandfather that nobody talk about. Uh, and she discovered that, that the grand-grandfathers were related with the Independent Party of Color, the only black political party that we have in Cuba, and finished in 1912 with a huge massacre. So Mercedes, the main character of The Roots of My Heart, uh, she tried to, you know, through the family history, through a dream, uh, through uh, the photos, uh, uh, to ask the history of the family, what happened? What happened in that chapter of the Cuban history? So uh, it's, it's something that I dedicate to Sara Gomez because of, she inspired me uh, to take care of this family history that sometimes you have through the photos that you don't know anything about these characters. And they were members of your family, but you don't know because as one of the characters, the main character's mother said, the past was so painful that it was much better to keep the silent, wow. don't talk. And I think that this is common to all the African diaspora. That the past being painful. Yes, yes. past have been so painful that it's much, much better not to talk about this, right. to forget it. And I discover, I get this sense of the African diaspora traveling here into the United States. How so? Because I discovered that even if we are different society, if, if, if different um, a political system, different history, you know, a different kind of uh, colonization, right. black people, they have in common many things. Slavery system, very painful. After the slavery system, the struggle continue, a lot of pain, a lot of... Uh, dissemination of the family member right. because uh, the people need to to work and doesn't have the resources. Many women alone taking care of the family mm -hmm. by themselves. So many things that happen. Some of this chapter very painful, but and I discovered many common things. Even if you speak English, we speak Spanish, uh, another speak French. There are a lot of separation. Definitely, and I, I could see that in your films where those common themes of mm -hmm. um, dealing with the pain, recovery of the past mm -hmm. um, is very much a part of it. Um, I, I think of uh, Roots of My Heart, yes. how it opens, mm -hmm. and um, just what you're, you're setting up with those photographs, you actually have the, the uh, main protagonist um, she she's looking at these photographs and, exactly. one, and one of the photographs includes uh, Sarah Gomez. So it's just yes. a beautiful tribute, uh, a beautiful film. And, sí. and being that that's your your it, that's your single narrative film. Yes. Um, yeah. It's it's just really um, and I made it well totally done. independent. Really. I so if I had to repeat that experience again, I'd say no, nope. no, nope, wouldn't do it. <laughs> it well, well, can you speak briefly on some of those uh, challenges? I, I imagine financially that you just financially, out. basically financially. Really, and why has it been such a struggle? Obviously, you've had some level of, of success in, in getting them produced, Mira, getting them I done. If I am going to to explain about the challenge. I think that I need to make a film about the challenge. That make a film about because the challenge. Because every project have the different story. Really? <laughs> so it's, uh, it will be until tomorrow talking about the, the, the challenge and difficulties. But something that it was all, with, all in all common in all my projects is that even if we work with a small, small, small budget, right. the people that work with me, they fall in love with the project and they help. 
we, uh, to work and direct in films, in this kind of project, is like to make a family. Uh, and, and that's how... That's beautiful. Yes. And that, that we can to work because they know since the beginning that you're not going to get the, 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 a good payment. Well, so certainly. they try to do the best that is possible and that's how they help me. So you've had some support along the way, but it's been a struggle. I, I imagine in what you're saying that each time you have to figure out um, how you're going to pay for each project. And um, we see, certainly, see, see, right. no, it's, it's a whole history. Each one has each a history. One, <laughs> definitely. Well, let's let's uh, talk a little bit about your your newest film. Uh, came out in 2015, and right now you're here in the United States touring and talking about the film Dialogue with my grandmother. Uh, let's take a quick break to see a little bit um, about the film, a little bit of the film. Soy de la opinión de que aquellos que escriben las versiones de la historia siempre guardan un espacio para los grandes personajes y las familias ilustres. En la ciudad de Santa Clara, por ejemplo, el apellido Abreu es muy conocido. Todos recuerdan con mucho respeto a Marta Abreu de Esteves, una mujer que desde el siglo XIX puso su fortuna en función de la independencia de Cuba y el progreso de su querida Santa Clara. Pero lo que no se debe olvidar es que durante la época de la esclavitud, los Abreu también fueron dueños de muchos esclavos. Y al igual que otros amos, le ponían el apellido de la familia a los esclavos de su propiedad. Algunos eran congos, otros macualo, cumíes, mandín, garará, carabalí, pero al final todos eran abrigos. So, if you could talk to us about um, uh, your newest film, Dialogue with My Grandmother, and how it came about. How did it emerge? In 1993, I record the voice of my grandmother. It was a family conversation. Inocencia, your grandmother. Inocencia, my grandmother. Inocencia Leonarda Armas y Abreu. Beautiful name. <laughs> Many names. Many names. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and. Uh, it was a conversation at home with a regular uh, machine in a cassette. Ah, in a cassette, 1993. 1993, yeah. we didn't sure. have anything digital in Cuba. So it is something that I record in the two faces of the, 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 the cassette. Right. And I keep it. And I have this cassette for, during many years. And only in this process that I was taking care of my mom that have uh, Alzheimer, and I take care of her and I spend a lot of time at home, uh, it's, a, it's a sickness that, you know, I have to stay home. Certainly. A lot of sad, sadness right. and problems. And I decided one day to listen. Hmm. Bueno, first we need to save the voice because it was in a regular cassette. Oh, so you saved and, it in a different, and, in a and we save, I save, and after we save, is that I listen the cassette. Uh -huh. And that's how I discover chapters of the family history, very interesting. I cry, I, I smile, uh, and I say, why 
I would like to make a film taking care of pieces of this dialogue. Not everything, because sometimes we talk about chapters of the family history, very complicated that even for me wasn't clear. Sure. So what I selected was things that allow the people to know who was my grandmother, her name, where she used to work, the challenge, the races, how was more or less the life of a poor black women before the revolution, before 1959. So... One of these underrepresented histories, once see, again. See, yeah. the kind of also, I realized it was the voice of many others. Right. Because when I showed the film in Havana, and even uh, last year here in the United States, that the premiere was in Atlanta, uh, many people recognized the common history. And it was a family conversation. It was not made to make a film. Right. It was in that kind of circumstance, personal situation that I have at home that I made the decision to, to remember all of them, my mom that was sick, and, and her memory up, you know? Mm. No with sadness right. all the time. It was a struggle. I was taking care of my mom who, together with my sister and another friends that help us because you know when you have somebody with that kind of sickness only one person oh no you need lots person, of support definitely. thousand person is not enough right. it's a lot of work but at the same time i said they did both of them they did so much for me right as a human being as a professional that i want to make a tribute so that's how i was in i, I little by little but i was lucky that the Institute of Film, ICAIC, is the Institute of Film in Havana, that they sponsor uh, the film. But even if with that budget that they gave me and the possibility to shoot, uh, I received a lot of support of many people here. For example, I get the, many of the props for the film here in the United States. Really? Yes, many that we don't have African costume, makeup for black women. The hair from that here we, in the United yes, States. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. You would think it would be the other way around. See, yeah. so uh, I receive a lot of support of people that that send all these props right. from Canada, from Germany, uh, uh, because uh, it was not possible to 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 do everything. Uh, the shooting was in Cuba, but I'm talking about material that sure. we that we need. Um, you know that when you are shooting. You need to save the images also in right. a special hard drivers when sometimes hard drivers can, they, they bought here. So it was a lot of things that I had so to- So those resources. Resources. And, and the dialogue with your grandmother not only um, is a tribute and chronicles her life, but um, it also talks about her spirituality. Because the music that I use in the film is a music that we use, we sing in Cuba for the spiritualism. Spiritualism in Cuba is very strong. It's around a table with the glasses of water and it's a, with flowers and... and Does it have its roots with, with Euro, oh, many Euro people, culture? No, 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 but the music, the, yes. the way that the music is sung in, in this film and in Cuba, is very African. African, definitely. It's very African. Yes. African and Spaniard, it's, it's a mix. Right. It's, it's the kind of thing that you cannot separate in the Cuban culture. Certainly. And also, it's, uh, this kind of song is practiced for black people and for white people. So it's not just something that's Afro-Cuban, it's, it's not Cuban exactly, people in general. Not, ex not exactly. Even in the spiritualism in Cuba, the the, the praise that we use came from Spain and came from the United States really? because the doctrines of Allan Kardec, the, that kind of book came from Spain and also from the United States. Because here in the United States there are many people that they practice the spiritualism around the table, maybe not in the way that we are, we practice in Cuba, but the spiritualism is practiced it, that is international. International. Yes. yes. But some people, they don't say that they practice. It's something that is very private sometimes. It's very at home. It's a family or with a circle right. of friends. But in the, in the case of this film, I open the doors in order that the people 
uh, get the confidence of this kind of manifestation. And so we all can share in that. Through uh, exactly, the film. through the music, mm -hmm. through the musicians. And it's a, it's a, a special dialogue that I establish between the history and the spiritualism. Thank you so much. So you'll be touring uh, here in the United States for the month of April. I hope uh, folks around the country are able to um, attend one of your talks, watch uh, your film. Mm -hmm. um, the One of the places you'll be going next is... Charleston, New Orleans. Charleston and New Orleans. Yes. And mm -hmm. uh, perhaps Kentucky or... Kansas, or I think that uh, I arrived late. Okay. I don't know All <laughs> right. if I will make Kentucky. But you'll you'll be hitting different places around the yes. around the country. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, it was a privilege and, and a wonderful uh, opportunity and great conversation to have you here today. Um, this is the Media Justice Network, and um, thank you for watching our show with Gloria Rolando. Mm -hmm.